But the thing is, like, ultimately, they don't need to tell us what their po political affi party affiliation is. Ultimately, we just need to know the policies that a person would uphold in the school board. And that's it. The policies that they will uphold and making sure that our kids are properly taught and properly cared for, ethically and morally. Making sure that they not only are learning, but also are given the proper tools to learn by making sure they have food in their tummies and as least amount of stress as possible. So we're in an election year and that means this November, there are going to be ballot initiatives on the ballot here in Florida. What does that mean? That means that you, yes, you, if you are Floridian, you have a choice and you have a opportunity to basically let your will and your voice be known directly. This is direct democracy that you get to wield. You have the power. So let's go into Amendment 1. This is going to be the first part in a series that we're going to be looking at the amendments that are going to be on the ballot. And this is to help you be an informed citizen. So let's go up here. Let me make sure that is this big enough? Yes. Okay. So Florida Amendment 1, Partisan School Board Elections Amendments. So says Florida Amendment 1, the Partisan School Board Elections Amendment is on the ballot in Florida as a legislatively referred constitutional amendment on November 5th, 2024. A yes vote supports making school board elections partisan beginning in the November 2026 general elections and for primary elections nominating party candidates for the 2026 election. A no vote opposes making school board elections partisan, thereby maintaining current procedures where school board members are elected in a non-partisan election. So a yes vote makes school board elections partisan and a no vote makes keeps school board elections non-partisan, okay? Now, let's continue. It says a supermajority requirement. In Florida, a 60% vote is required for voters to approve Amendment 1. So the onus is on the yes vote, meaning 60% of voters need to vote yes in order for this to pass. Anything below 60% means that the Florida electorate rejects it. So says, what would Amendment 1 change about school board elections in Florida? says, Amendment 1 would make school board elections partisan beginning in 2026. Candidates would be nominated for the general election through a partisan primaries and be featured on the ballot with partisan labels, such as Democrat and Republican. As of 2024, the Florida Constitution requires school board elections to be nonpartisan, meaning that partisan labels do not appear on the ballot next to a candidate's name. Florida has, I'm sorry, Florida had partisan school board elections until voters approved Amendment 11, which prohibited party labels in school board elections in 1998. Amendment 11 was referred to the ballot by the Florida Constitution Revision Commission. School board members in Florida are elected by the voters of a county and serve four-year terms. The school board controls school property, establishes organizes and operates the schools of the district, including establishing schools, adopting enrollment plans, providing for school elimination and consolidation, cooperating with school boards of adjoining districts and maintaining schools, maintaining the school year schedule and other duties as outlined in Florida law. So it talks about, so, um, 
it says <sighs> what states have partisan school board elections it says as of 2024 uh, Florida was one of 41 states with state laws providing for nonpartisan school board elections. Four states, Alabama, Connecticut, Louisiana, and Pennsylvania, have state laws providing for partisan school board elections. Five states, Rhode Island, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, provide for partisan or nonpartisan school board elections depending on the district. The state laws of 41 states containing 11,761 school districts provides for school board elections without party labels identifying the affiliation of candidates listed on the ballot nonpartisan elections. So we're going to go uh, into what state legislators say about the ballot a little bit later. Uh, so this is what the ballot title will say on the ballot. I want to make sure you guys are not confused says partisan election of members of district school boards, proposing amendments to the state constitution to require members of a district school board to be elected in a partisan election rather than a nonpartisan election and to specify that the amendment only applies to elections held on or after the November 2026 20, general election. However, Partisan primary elections may occur before the 2026 general election for purposes of nominating political party candidates to that office for placement on the 2026 general election ballot. So it talks about the constitutional changes. So who supports it? It says officials are State Senator uh, Joy Grutters, uh, Tyler Sioris, and State Rep, uh, Representative Spencer Roach. So these are all Republicans. So here is their arguments. So it says State Senator Joe Grutters says parties engage in these races. There's no such thing as nonpartisan race anymore. These races are partisan. And the only ones that aren't informed are being tricked. And what happens is there are games that are played all the time in these races. And what I'm trying to do is pull the back off voters' heads. So that's what Joe Grutter says. Spencer Roach says, I simply think as policymakers, we have the obligation to provide voters with as much information as possible about the candidates to include party affiliation and let the voters make their decisions based on the information. So I don't think you should ever be allowed to use the power of the law to hide your ideology or to hide your affiliations, whether it's with a political party or otherwise. I think it's really legal fiction that these races are nonpartisan. The candidates are nonpartisan actors. And I think there are real differences in the party platform. So I think that every race, including judicial races, should be partisan. That's what these two say. The opposition, uh, State Senator Bobby Powell, Junior and State Representative Angela Nixon says this. So Angela Nixon says, I believe this bill is not about transparency at all. This bill is about making our school board elections and our school boards more contentious, contentious like DC, which Republicans honestly always try to oppose. This is from Tina Curtin, school board chair of Alchua County, says it is important that these races stay nonpartisan because everyone is impacted by school decisions. It doesn't matter what your political affiliation is, and I think everyone should get to vote and have a voice on a candidate. It is not just based on your political registration during the time of the election. We're seeing more politicization in education because of the, Florida, the governor of Florida's actions. That is not rising up from local communities. It is coming down from Tallahassee from the governor down. This is from Carmen Ward says, I do not think there's any place for partisan politics in our public education system. We should be fully focused on what's best for the students. And I feel like public education is under attack. And part of the attack is sowing the seeds of division. I think this is part of our culture war strategy that is being perpetuated in classrooms on educators and public school systems by our leadership. This is from State Senator Bobby Powell. He said, this is not something that's being done nationwide. If you look nationwide, most of the school board races and school boards remain nonpartisan. I am hopeful 
that what will happen in regard to partisan politics does not bleed into our school board races. So there's no money in campaign finance for, on this. Uh, so this gives a background of school boards and then examples school board candidates appear on the ballot. So um, most school boards are nonpartisan. This is basically what it's talking about. Uh, and there is there is you know no uh, there's not that many that allow for partisan in school board now. I do have some thoughts uh, in regards to school board, you know, school boards uh, being partisan on the ballot. Um, I just want to get to this gentleman, uh, Spencer Roach. And let me go down in my notes. Okay. So Spencer Rose says, I simply think as policymakers, we have an obligation to provide voters with as much information as possible about candidates to include party affiliation and let the voters make their decisions based on that information. My question is, why not just go according to their policy platform? Why do you have to have just a pol uh, why do you have to have a, you know, political party affiliation? So this can give either party an excuse to further divide the workers by trying to have either all Republican or Democrat run school districts. They also can further this divide by claiming, quote, your children aren't doing well because the Republican ran school districts or your children are being indoctrinated by the Democrat ran school districts. Right. Meanwhile, the kids suffer because it's really about who's running the school district instead of what's ethical and right for the school district, regardless of party. So ultimately, when it comes to this, uh, he says, so I don't think you should ever be allowed to use the power of the law to hide your ideology or hide your affiliations. Well, it's not really hiding your ideology because if you put your policy platform on paper, you're not hiding your ideology. Right. Like, for instance, if you have a policy that says, well, I am for universal school meals, you're not hiding your your part of your ideology. You're putting it right there on paper. You're just not having a D or R next to your name. Right. Another point. Um, also, it says he says, uh, I think it's really a legal fiction that these races are nonpartisan. Says the candidates uh are nonpartisan actors. And I think there are real differences in the party platform. So I think that every race, including judicial races, should be partisan. No, because the thing is, it's like not everybody has the same, uh, not everybody has the same idea. You know, there is, there's even divisions among people who are in the Democratic Party, right? Or people like, like what if I were running for school board? Right. We're, as an independent, how would people be able to gauge me? Because I would have an I next to my name. Right. If we had partisan uh, school board elections. So then what would they have to do? They would have to go to my website. And see what my policy platform is. Right. Because I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. And so that means that they would need to see line by line what I would want to do as a school board attendant, as a school board member. So I could be one of those people who say, well, I think we should have universal school lunches. I also think we should have universal school breakfasts. Right? And I will also be one of those school board members that says we need to implement and make sure that we put vocational programs in each school, starting with the most disenfranchised schools, especially in black and brown neighborhoods. So if a black 
if a school that's predominantly black does not have a swimming pool for swim classes, well, guess what? We're going to implement swimming pools in those schools. If those schools do not have enough laptops and computers, then we're going to implement those laptops and computers. If those schools who are in rural districts don't have enough for their kids to have uh, to, they don't have enough in rural districts, of course, then we're going to make sure that those students are taken care of. We're going to have more after school programs so that they don't have to go home and be alone and let their mind wander and do crazy, stupid stuff. When it comes to the curriculum, then I would be one of those people who would say, yeah, no more homework. <laughs> What's the purpose? We need to do like a lot of the European schools do and just like not give homework. Right. So uh, it's just. I think, you know, putting partisan politics in school is a bad idea. So, yes, I actually agree um, with. especially this from Carmen Ward says, I do not think that there's any place for partisan politics in our public education system. We should be fully focused on what's best for students. I feel like public education is under attack and part of that attack is sowing the seeds of division. I think it is part of the culture war strategy that's being perpetuated on classrooms, on educators and public school systems by our leadership. Meaning People are going to say, oh, my, this person is and it insert their political party and they're indoctrinating our kids. You know what I'm saying? Go to their website, look at their policy platform and then judge from there. This is just a means of division. So I personally would vote no on this. Also, where's the line? Are we going to be forcing teachers to share their political party affiliation as well? Even though they're not voted in, they're also the ones who our children are mostly influenced by directly. In my junior and senior year, I had a science teacher named Ronald Galuba. And towards the end of my senior year, we pressured him to tell us his party affiliation. He would not tell us. Though we could have gauged by how he spoke about certain things, we kind of knew, but we wanted to get it straight from the horse's mouth. So we pressured him and telling us, and he was a Republican. He was one of those people who talked about personal responsibility and, you know, people need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. And we were like, oh, yeah, he, he's a Republican. And by the way, I was at a predominantly uh, black and brown school. He wasn't the only Republican teacher we had. My, my history teacher was a black Republican. But we had no idea until we essentially forced it out of them. But the thing is, like, ultimately, they don't need to tell us what their po political affili party affiliation is. Ultimately, we just need to know the policies that a person would uphold in the school board. And that's it policies that they will uphold and making sure that our kids are properly taught and properly cared for ethically and morally making sure that they not only are learning but also are given the proper tools to learn by making sure they have food in their tummies and as least amount of stress as possible. And giving them the tools to be able to be the worker that they want to be. But yeah, so that is Amendment 1. I personally would vote no on this ballot measure because partisan politics do not belong in our school system. So this is just to give you guys the rundown about Amendment 1. Next week, I will be focused on Amendment 2. So we'll be doing that. So if you guys would like to, you guys can stay tuned for that. 
especially if you're a voter in Florida. So please make sure to share this uh, so that your family and friends and co colleagues in Florida are aware of the ballot measures that direct democracy that you have a voice in this November for Florida and pay attention to these ballot measures wherever you are, whatever state you are, because these things matter. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.